of some cotton bales. And in case you have no idea now, His Majesty O2 for Sergio II is a member of Giba because he's a proud owner of Opimso Radio and Opimso TV. So I wonder how it will be like. A round of applause for His Majesty. He's now a media owner at Santaman Broadcasting Corporation. So we're also live on Opimso Radio and Opimso TV and all the social platforms of Mashia Palace. This so much, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to invite uh, my good friend, the president of Prem Park, Mr. Andrew Edwin. Now, Andy, I don't, okay. How many she's? Maybe one. Hmm. Your Royal Majesty, to the second minister for information and his deputy your excellency ambassador u.s ambassador to ghana all other protocols observed i deem it a great honor to stand before this august audience to deliver some remarks at this made in media capacity enhancement program under the theme shaping the media to play an effective role in our nation building and being organized under the auspices of the ministry of information this is indeed commendable effort and initiative and on behalf of the private newspaper publishers association of ghana Park. I say kudos to the minister and his deputy and all those through whose brainstorming and effort this has today become a reality. Your Royal Majesty, we in the Executive Committee of Primpa are particularly excited about this unique opportunity media partners in the country because from where we sit as national we can confidently say that some of our police have unfortunately have lived as journalists all because of lack of fresh knowledge in their own all it is the prayer that while paying attention to enhancing our intellectual capabilities to perform media practitioners, we also pay attention to the business aspects of the media. And here May I suggest that the government, through the Ministry of Information, should consider coming up with a media policy to ensure equitable distribution of state-sponsored adverts among all media organizations, irrespective of the usual perceived political inclinations, in view of the fact that it constitutes in view of the fact that it constitutes a lifeline to the survival of media organizations in the country. Your Royal Majesty, another critical issue worth paying attention to is the conditions of service and the welfare of media practitioners, both present and when we have gone on retirement. It is very pathetic, Your Majesty, the state in which we see some of our older colleagues when they go on retirement, with some becoming complete paupers and a burden to their families and friends, a development that is counterproductive to the growth of the media in Ghana and demotivating as far as attracting the critical minds 
into the media profession is concerned. Your Royal Majesty, now that the government and other media stakeholders have instituted moves to support Ghana's ailing media, may I respectfully use this platform to call on the government and all the national media groupings and associations, as well as other stakeholders, to consider empowering the working committee to also find ways of instituting a pension or retirement scheme for all media practitioners, into which scheme practitioners will be asked to make contributions to safeguard our future in terms of need when we are no more in active practice. Your Majesty, there is no gain saying the fact that the media are the fulcrum around which Ghana's democracy and development will work. But the honest reality of today is that we are operating against a mirror that have made it difficult for us to carry out our constitutional mandate as the state of the realm. By holding our leaders to account and also play our watchdog role effectively. And I humbly call on all media stakeholders in this country, particularly the government, to lead the discussion as to finding ways of strengthening the Ghanaian media without necessarily compromising their independence in the interest of Mother Ghana. Your Royal Majesty, Minister of Information, if we ignore these problems, we may risk pumping resources into this series of laudable and all important training programs only for the beneficiaries to become redundant because there are no media houses in which to work in view of the fact that they might all have collapsed. Your Royal Majesty, let me end my address by once again, on behalf of Impact, Commending all those who have made this major media capacity enhancement program a reality. I wish all of us a very successful training program. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for the president of PRIMPAC, Mr. Andrews Edwin Arthur. It's good to see so many, many familiar faces here. Aparijan, I saw Aparijan somewhere. Uh, Happy New Year, Parijan. Also here uh, for this meeting edition of media capacity enhancement. The last time that I saw a presentation uh, from Mauko was very brief, very uh, short, and uh, you can use just one word to sum up everything. So I'd like to invite the president of the Institute of Public Relations, Ghana, Malko Avajeno, give us just brief remark. The Royal Majesty, Uchim Forsyth, please. His Excellency, the U.S. MCEP Working Committee, the Chair Ghana, colleagues and opportunities. I sure whether the significance of today is truly obvious to all of us, and whether the strong sense of history is coming true. As a young boy growing here, some 40 plus, excellence in journalism, assembled by the Kumasi Premier. Excellence in journalism, the then the corporation. Excellence in 
internalism reflected in the depth of discussions that took place all around me in small spaces, even when we were playing draft. is tapping into that deep sense of mystery. It flows out of a certain recognition that the and that is the narrative that this program well put together by an extremely enterprising minister of state, our dear Chief of Information, Mr. Kujo Bonkuma, has been able to initiate and that we are adoring here. And the truth of the matter is that every morning in this country, millions of our countrymen get up and their mood for the day, the energy for that entire 24 hours is shaped by what they listen to on radio, what they read on social media, the content they engage with. And individuals here have the capacity to influence that mood, that perception of our country, that belief in Ghana, that energy and drive that gives us hope and the belief that Ghana is the country to belong to and that every, every single action of us has consequences over and beyond what we think. And that is why this training is so important. And that's why I'm so glad it's happening here. Of all places, this is the only place it must happen. Now, to the first set of beneficiaries, to whom much is expected, much is given, much is expected. And we are believing that you are going to go out there and be change agents. See, I work in the communication industry, and I recognize that in every country, development hinges on quality communication in the country because it's the gel that holds us together. It's the beam that brings us together. It's the source of our inspiration as a country. And we definitely have the chance, I dare say the biggest chance in history, to make it right. But you see, where the rewards are greatest, the risks are also highest. And that's the reason why capacity building, training, continuous learning, improving ourselves is so very essential. I can't be happier than I am today that we are here. And you have the greater support of the Ghana Institute of Public Relations, whom I represent. We believe in this country. We believe in our journalists. We believe that tomorrow, starting from today, with the learning and the application of the knowledge, we are going to be the difference makers. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Malko Afajenu. And you know, that's the reason I need to participate again in the Stambic Africa Media Forum. Aha, it's very important. Your Majesty, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's time to invite Her Excellency Stephanie Sullivan, the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, to give us a remark. Your Royal Majesty of Tumfo Ose Tutu II, Honorable Minister of Information, Kojo Apankuma, Honorable Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Ose Mensa, and all other ministers, Professor Kwamana Kwansa Edu, Rector of the Ghana Institute of Journalism and Chairman of the Working Committee, Media Professionals, Nananu, in the interest of time, I ask to stand on all previous protocols. I hope the MC heard that. I'm so pleased to be here with you at the invitation of His Royal Majesty, the Asante Hene, and the Minister of Information. Thank you for your kind invitation to participate. Today kicks off a very important program for Ghana, one that will strengthen press freedom and overall accountability. Freedom of speech freedom to assemble, and freedom of the press are fundamental principles for every democracy. Without even one of these, democracy cannot long survive. A safe, free, professional, and responsible media supports democratic principles and informs current public policy debates so that voters can make informed decisions. 
It's been said that information is the currency of democracy. And that's where you, the journalists, come in. Your role as journalists is fundamental to public debate on key issues. With the stroke of the pen, you can highlight a public problem or injustice. You can show people how public policy is working or isn't working. You can hold government and public officials accountable to their promises. You can ask tough questions that demand answers. And you can follow up to verify follow through or lack thereof. But with that power, as we've just heard, comes great responsibility. It's essential to do your research. Check and double check your sources. Seek a different perspective. Don't be misled by a Kwaku Anansi who gives you only one side of a story. We are all better served by a well-rounded, fact-based body of reporting that allows the public to hear all sides. And often, that means not being the first to break news. With strong and professional reporting, you can bring balance to public policy debates. You can remove emotion and replace it with facts that let us all participate in democracy. You can give a voice to all sides in a debate, even if you personally disagree with some views. The United States is an ardent defender of a free and responsible and safe press. We at the US Embassy in Accra support various programs throughout the year that strengthen press freedom and also strengthen journalism as a profession, because we too believe that accurate information is the currency of democracy. To that end, if you permit a public service announcement, we have just released our annual call for funding proposals, including programs that promote press freedom, media literacy, and combating disinformation and misinformation. The deadline to submit statements of interest is February 1st. I hope some of you will consider applying for this opportunity. I'd like to close by congratulating the Asante Hene, the Minister of Information, and all others who have contributed to this program that I'm sure will be a wonderful success. We stand behind you in this effort and are ready to assist in any way we can. We're pleased to be here among our friends and fraternity to support this initiative. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much. Another round of applause for the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana. Thank you so much. And uh, we thank you for your support. Thank you for all that you've been doing for Ghanaian journalists. We thank you so much. Now is the time to listen to the of our sector, the Minister of Information. Honorable Kojo Opon Kroba, the darling boy. Your Royal Majesty and Pillar of Peace, Utum Fose to the second, the Ashanti Hini. My uncle, the Ashanti Regional Minister, Simon Osei Mensa, Deputy Minister for Information, the Honorable Fatih Abu Bakar, the Mayor, Sampine, Chairman of the National Media Commission, Yabuedwa Ebuafo, Chairman of the Media Capacity Enhancement Program Working Committee and Rector of GIMPA, Professor Kwanza Edu, President of the GJA Afalmoni, President of GIBA, Cecil Sunkwa Mills, President of PRIMPAC, Edwin Arthur, the Chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Communications, the Honorable Cynthia Morrison, and President of the IPR Ghana, Zmaulia Fajinu, participant journalists, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. Ambassador, Her Excellency, Stephanie Sullivan, good morning. I want to start by thanking the Asante Hino to the second for welcoming us into his palace and hosting us for the opening of Ghana's National Media Capacity Enhancement Program, organized by stakeholders in the media industry and sponsored by the Ministry of Information and its partners. About two years ago, we at the Ministry of Information commenced a series of engagements 
with stakeholders in the media industry to develop a series of programs with the objective of supporting the Ghanaian media. The media, which is designed to play a very critical role in our national life, cannot be left to its own devices in what has become a highly competitive effort. Two major needs came up for attention at the end of the engagements. One, the need to support stakeholders in the industry to regularly train practicing journalists so that their capacity is enhanced in areas of ethics, professionalism, media law, impact journalism, specialization, and investigation journalists. Two, the need to support a coordinated mechanism for the safety of journalists. Last year, a coordinated mechanism for the safety of journalists was ruled out by the National Media Commission. While still in its early stages, the National Media Commission required financial support from the state, development partners, functional and effective. On the matter of capacity and hand, the Ministry of Information encouraged the stakeholders and media to work together. Response to our engagement and our support. The stakeholders comprising the National Media Commission, the Ghana Journalist Association, the Ghana Independent Broadcasters Association, the Private Newspaper Publishers Association, PRIMPAC, the Institute of Public Relations, the Communication Educators Association of Ghana, civil society groups in media, and selected leading journalists and media houses have worked together, emphasis worked together, to set up an independent working group through which they have, one, conducted a skills gap analysis of practicing journalists, two, developed a curriculum for training practicing journalists, and three, selected their own faculty from amongst leading academia and industry practitioners to administer the curriculum. This is what has culminated in the National Media Capacity Enhancement Program, launched in Accra in November, and which opens in Kumasi today, with the first cohort of a targeted 250 practicing journalists this year, 2022, drawn from across the country to be trained for the next one week on emerging issues in journalism. And at this juncture, too, for may I ask the first cohort to please rise so that we can all receive them with a big round of applause, drawn from media houses all over the country, and who will be in Kumasi for the next one week for this. Thank you very much. As you resume your seat, your colleagues making up 250 will also participate in subsequent cohorts this year. As I mentioned earlier, the needs assessment, curriculum development, administration of training is all being done by this independent group of industry stakeholders. And Otumfo, again with your permission, may I invite the very hard-working group to please rise so that we can celebrate them with a big round of applause. It is your hard work that has brought all of us here today. And we celebrate the collaboration that you have put together. Let's celebrate them with a big round of applause. We celebrate the collaboration that you have put together to bring us this far. Please resume your seats. In our industry, Otumfo, there's often not much working together. We have not been united in building solutions to our common challenges that we face. And this has mostly limited how much impact and growth we can record together. This, therefore, is a refreshing beginning, and I pray the collaboration among these players will last. Permit me also to thank well in advance the faculty or resource persons drawn from leading institutions and media houses that will be taking the participants through the various modules. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this program, equipping the media to play an effective role in our nation building, is apt and timely. It invites all of us to reflect on how germane the fourth estate of the realm, the media, is to the exercise of nation building. Without the media, it is difficult, if not impossible, for the state to inform her citizens of development in the realm and for citizens to feed back to the state what their priorities may be. But the assumption that media necessarily has the capacity to handle all matters that pop up daily, from archaeology to zoology, only because we have a pen or a microphone, is false. This falsehood is further aggravated by the reality that a significant proportion of practicing journalists are not recruited because they have graduated from prior journalism training institutions that have been established for training journalists. Indeed, for many practitioners, including your grandson here, when I was initially recruited as a journalist in 2007, 
have had no prior professional training. It takes regular training and capacity enhancement to keep practitioners on the path of high professionalism and to keep the industry generally highly professional. The task of supporting the industry, which is already resource constrained amidst high competition, ought not to be taken for granted, nor left to any single group to execute. Indeed, the media is so delicate that leaving this task to any single group could become an undue avenue for manipulation of the media. And that is why we are delighted that it is taking collaboration, working together to bring us this far. As a government office, our task is only to support what the independent group is doing, and we are happy to play this role. This industry is one that has very little support. And so may I take advantage of this opportunity to call on our development partners to support this collaborative effort so that we can assist more and more journalists every year across the country. We are the Ministry of that are addressing the capacity challenge faced by in this comprehensive, coordinated and regular manner will yield more dividend than occasional support given by stakeholders, uh, especially around election seasons. To my colleagues in journalism whose applications have been accepted by the stakeholders, let me encourage you to embrace the lessons of the next one week with the seriousness and enthusiasm that you can master. To others who are considering taking up this opportunity in the near future, I encourage you to do so. To media houses across the country that struggle to find the resources to constantly train your teams, I say to you, this is the support that you have been waiting for. Embrace it. I hope we all take inspiration from Alvin Toffler, the American writer and businessman, when he said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but will be those who cannot learn and unlearn or relearn to acquire some new knowledge in their fields of endeavor. The world we are living in is fast and dynamic and is changing. Change is constant. So let's keep learning so that we stay ahead of the curve. But for once again, we are most grateful for your hospitality. We thank you. Thank you very much. The Honorable Minister of Information, Honorable Kojo Opong Kroma. Thank you. 
Wasaji fogu no waso, Krasa nade kasangen. Wasaji fogu no waso, Krasa nade kasangen. Koto kwa ini kase, kwa bia ini kasangen. Koto kwa ini kase, kwa bia ini kasangen. Me ma kwa bia ini kasangen. Me ma kwa bia ini kasangen. I sent a gentleman to a champ on the name. I sent a gentleman to a champ on the name. I sent a sensible smetting. 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 I sent a vital building function for the media. First, let me thank the Minister of Information for the initiative the need for such an initiative and bonding to We have just come through which are put through is stress. The commencement of on the 8th Parliament of the 4th Republic had not been in the most edifying tradition. No one could have expected that the year would conclude with the House degenerated into a brawl with very honorable members putting aside their debate skills in order to execute the stress on our highest institutions of state and on the nation's side of both now and the future. Yo. Recognize, recognizing this makes it necessary for us to take a good look at ourselves and the path we have embarked upon. Yo. Any fault lines that may appear so we can take the appropriate steps to mend them. Such constant introspection is necessary if we are to avoid the unexpected and secure the future for generations to come. So, it is understandable that the focus of such introspection shall be highest on our political leaders who, after all, occupy what political scientists consider the first and second estates of the realm, namely the executive and the legislature. And we do of necessity also have to empathize with the Chief Justice as in his duty of protecting the rule of law it comes to matters relating to what is referred to as 
we tend to treat it with less than it, it deserves. After all, we do not elect them, nor do we have to worry about how much our taxes they need for their upkeep. Is every so, the media opens the eyes and ears of society to what is happening around them and acts a filtration system that enables the people to filter good from the bad. And you, the media, induce the feelings and emotions we contribute to the decisions and actions we take as individuals. So, so. Indeed, all the studies about the role of the media attest to its power and influence under all political systems. Just as make informed decisions in a democracy, so it can mobilize and arouse mob action to destabilize society. So, in Ghana, the media can be said to be a major success story in the country's journey to democratic governance. We remember the period when all media, both print and electronic, was owned and controlled by the state. The contrast today is mind-bungling. The media terrain today reflects a diversity of political opinion and journalists feel free to operate without the constraints of the now diseased criminal liber law. So, so. But while we celebrate the liberation of the media, we cannot ignore the sight of fresh debris thrown onto the terrain by the explosion of freedom. It may well be that not all the people who were attracted by the lure of the media were full and ethic standards enshrined in the It may also be the case that the pace of expansion of the electronic media is faster than results. We have a mixed bag of, on the one hand, some outstanding media houses doing their best to emulate the press barons of bygone days, while on the other hand, we face numerous operations giving cause for great concern. So, as a profession, our conception of the years of press freedom and respect for the laws and traditions of our society. So, the core business of the media is to provide the citizens with information which enables them to come to informed decisions. So, every professional journalist knows that his greatest asset, indeed the greatest asset of the profession, is credibility. And credibility comes from the accuracy of information and the fairness with which it is presented. So, so, Journalism does not peddle in rumors. There's a line between fact and comment or conjecture that the profession must always respect, and the media must never forget that it loses credibility whenever it material which turns to potentially inaccurate. So, further, the media needs to disabuse its mind of the misconception that it's without bounds. The removal of the criminal libel law only removed the criminal which could send journalists to jail. So, but the right of the citizen to have recourse to the law for the defamation by the media remains absolutely intact. So, the laws of libel and defamation are alive, and there are still laws against incitement. Offenses likely to cause a breach of the peace and many others designed to protect the peace and security of the state. So, so any of these laws can have relevance to the decisions of the media. It is evident from any close analysis of the media terrain today that there may be a yawning gap in the conception of the elements within the media. As a man with official responsibility for information, I applaud the Honorable Minister Kojok Opon Kroma and his ministry for not seeking the path of confrontation on the issue. Recourse to education is the appropriate step, and I'm pleased he has found this formidable team of experts to kickstart 
to kickstart the educational journey. So, it is my hope that improving the understanding of our practitioners will contribute to the enhancement of the quality of the media and diminish the sources of concern we see today. So, let me conclude with a fervent appeal to the media, to all our journalists and media owners. We all have a duty to protect and preserve the unity and stability of our country. In the face of all the turmoil in the world, you are proud because you can point to your country with pride in its stability and increasing success. So, a challenging moment it has been, but it is also the moment for us to follow the method and count our blessings. So, count them one, and we will know what the Lord has done for us. The knowledge, that knowledge should inspire us to persevere, to work hard to douse the fires of conflict, work hard to forge unity, generosity of heart. Never mind where the momentum of politics may be, peace and stability of our nation must be, must be inviolable. So, in a nation and indeed to of humanity, if they can create an environment that encourages consensus building to help power, to help lower society to be conscious of when they are practicing as proper politics. I thank you, Honorable invited people came today to make this possible for our Ghana. Thank you so, very much. Yeah. With this remarkable speech from His Majesty Otto for stage to the second, the media capacity enhancement program is officially launched. And at this point, I would like to invite the Honorable Minister of the Honorable Minister of Ashanti and the Mayor, because the Chairman of the National Media of the work committee, of course, the ambassador is with his majesty. The Honorable Deputy Minister of Information. History is being made here. The media capacity enhancement program is due to the Adamantia Palace. Now the members of the committee, our proud members, should also join. Members of the committee, Professor Eric of Kubensa, Ms. Gloria Hayu, Mr. Ramoni Labi, David Balata Maclo, Mr. Henry Dotti, Mr. 
this is family and this is some So we now invite President of Primpac, the Director General of of the Committee of Communication and Information, President of FIFA, Secretary of the President of DJ, and the President of Institute of Public Relations, Ghana. Malco, yes. Mr. Afel Moni, GJ President. Mr. George Ford, Executive Secretary of the National Media Commission. Mr. Cecil Sugar Mills, President of GIBA. Honorable Cynthia Morrison, Chair of Committee on Communication and Information. Director General of GBC, Professor Anim Al Hassan. President of Pembak,
history he has with me. Equipping the media to play an effective role in our nation building. We thank you, Honorable Kajo of Pankroba, for this initiative. We are most grateful for this leadership. I now would like to invite the Deputy Minister of Information, Honorable Fatima to Abubakar, to give us the vote of thanks. A round of applause for Honorable Fatima to Abubakar, Deputy Minister of Information. We thank God for this beautiful day and for such a successful and memorable event. With your kind permission, I would like to start by thanking His Royal Majesty Utumfo Osei the Second, the Asantehine, for the warm reception, for the wisdom, for this majestic gathering, and for every opportunity he has given us to gather in Asanteman this morning. I would also like to thank the able regional minister, Honorable Simon Osemensa, for receiving us. I would like to thank the mayor of Kumase, Honorable Sam Pine, the ambassador of the United States of America in Ghana, Her Excellency Stephanie Sullivan. I would also like to thank the heads of institutions and associations who joined us this morning, the religious leaders present, I would also like to extend a very co big congratulations to the working committee and thank them for the good work done of which we are all witnessing this morning. Our distinguished participants and invited guests, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And to our able MC, thank you for steering this beautiful program. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Honorable Deputy Minister of Information, Honorable Fatima Zou Abubakar. Adorable always. I'd like to invite the Ashanti Regional Chief Imam, Sheikh Abdul Mumin Harun, to give us a closing prayer. And uh, Sheikh, yeah. And I know it's going to be a prayer. Let her remark. Nana Shiami. Pa, soon for a show, Mammy said, Me catch the barman, but I'm born in Shiman, my bumpire. Okay, I mean, I'm also a major. So please be seated and open your arms and let us call Allah to bless us all. And I'm going to do my prayers in Islamic. I have been written there. Mr. Living Lady, Kwame Adintra. Audhullah min ash-shaytan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نعبد إهدنا صراط مستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مقدور عليهم ولا الدالين اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا له ذات بيننا وحدنا سبل السلام ونجينا من الزلال النور كنبنا من الفواهش ما ظهر منها ما بطنا وبارك لنا في أسماعنا وأبصارنا وأزواجنا وذرياتنا وقلوبنا وتوب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى تقى والأفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى وأنت جعلنا في رضاك اللهم أعطنا الصنع تواها زكيها برحمتك يا 
الرحمن يا رب العالمين سبحان رب Thank you so much, the original chief Imam Sheikh Abdul Mumin Haroon. Thank you so much. We are proud of you always. We shall now all rise. Shall we all rise? Thank you. Now, His Majesty will have a photo with the rest of the team, most especially with the working committee and the recipients of this memorable initiative. We've come to an end of a successful program here at the Manchester Palace. We wish you all the best. I will wish the Black Stars all the best. So the Honorable Minister will meet his Majesty halfway. And our VIPs will meet the Chief of Staff you will meet at the conference room of the Chief of Staff, so take notice of that. All the members of the committee and our VIPs.